Here we have the stacked TKL. With this build, I was going for a deep sounding build, and the only drawback to it is that the board is solder only. However, I felt that because the price was only $85, I'd give it a try. Canon Keys doesn't sell it with switches, stabilizers, or keycaps. This board is not like many other boards because it is a do-it-yourself kit with layered acrylic sheets, and it also has an extra key in the F13 spot that makes it more aesthetic and provides for some extra customizability. The pictures on Canon Keys doesn't do this board justice. So I grabbed some Gateron Milky Yellows, some Duroc V2 stabilizers, and I already had some SA keycaps that I felt would sound really nice and deep with the case and switches. The first thing I did with this keyboard was remove all of the paper from the acrylic. This didn't take long, but I should have worn some gloves to keep the inside surfaces more clean. I looped the Gateron Milky Yellows with Crytox 205 Grade Zero. Because these switches are linear, I didn't have to worry about getting lube on the LEDs. Down below is an affiliate link for 5% off from KeyboardLube.com. They are the first affiliate for the channel, so show them some support. I lube almost every keyboard when I build it. It does take around 4 hours to open each switch and coat all the surfaces evenly, but afterward the smoothness is really worth it. I'm not sure which plastic they use, but something about these switches in particular makes for a cleaner, deeper tone than many other switches. In a little bit, I'll show you a sound test and you can hear it for yourself. I took apart and looped the screw and Duroc V2 stabilizers. When working with a solder only board, it's important to use really good stabilizers to begin with, because once you finish, it's much harder to fix problems with the stabilizers. While soldering these switches, I did notice that there were spots for single color LEDs, which I may actually add some in the near future. The process is rather easy if you've never soldered before. I started to assemble the case, and if you are following along and assembling it yourself, you'll notice that the process is fairly straightforward. The smallest acrylic pieces make up the stand. I just lined up the three layers of the stand, dropped in some standoffs, and then put on the smallest layer and screwed it in. Turning the stand over, I aligned the bottom of the case and was able to screw it in quite easily. Around the edge of the board, I screwed in the rest of the standoffs. The layer with the cuts for the USB plug go next, then the solid layer without the cut for the plug. Because the USB plug was getting stuck on the last layer, I slid it in between the PCB and the plate and then added the bundle to the stack. After this, I added the top layers, which had cutouts for the arrow keys and the cursor and navigation keys. The last top layer was smaller than the other top layers. I screwed this last layer in using a star pattern and put all the keycaps on. Listen to how deep and thocky this board is. If you are looking for a customizable, entry-level board and have a good idea of what you want, I definitely suggest grabbing this board. Even though it does not have hot swappable switches, it's cheap and versatile. 
Sometimes I don't want a high pitched and clacky board like with my aluminum boards. So the deep tone is really soothing and the board feels rather forgiving. The SA key camps complement the sound and feel really great. If you like this build video, please consider subscribing, throw me a like, and I'll see you in the next one.